Hello, my name's Simon and today we're going to talk about the GCF or 6CF, some people call it, feature on Bestway Hot Tubs. This is the ground connection failure error that you get and I'll put a clip of it beeping and it's very annoying. There we go, it's in, it's turned on. If I then trip the, so you can see that come on, you can hear it beep. And then within a few minutes, there we go, ground connection fault. So that's the same error no matter where I plug it in and it's kind of a, a showstopper. You, you can't continue until you've fixed it. So I'm just going to have to read some notes what I'm doing here. So we need to look at why, why best way have done this. There's two reasons. They don't want to get sued. Uh, so what it's doing is it's checking that you have a good ground on the hot tub. So if there's a fault in the, in the egg that comes with it, and I'll put a picture of that up, in the egg, then it will immediately shut it down. But it needs to be able to earth any electricity through the earth either on a ground spike or through your through your mains where you've got neutral bonding quicker that it can go through you and, and educate and, and, and actually electrocute, electrocute you so they want to not get sued and they don't want dead people floating in in, in hot tubs and as a, as a consumer I don't want to be floating in a hot tub either so it, it, it's a logical thing that they fitted it's just very annoying if you have the faults that I had so I'll talk you through the top 10 steps on how you can resolve the ground connection fault so, number one, well zero, this is actually zero, is reboot. If you restart it, does the error clear? Uh, just click the uh, RCD on and off and just check that it, if it clears. Very simple, that one. Number one is if you, are, if you use an extension, you must remove the extension. Because remember, the wizardry in there is checking for ground loop impedance. It's checking how quickly you can get an earth. If there's a faulty earth in your extension, or the earth pin is not very good, or there's a fault, then you need to remove the extension. This is only for testing, remember. You can put your extension back later, but just prove if it's an extension. The next thing is to try a different socket. So that's, that, that's number two, different socket. You want a socket, at the moment I'm in, in my log cabin, and there's sockets here, and the impedance on these sockets is slightly higher than in the house, and you want the lowest impedance possible um, for, for the circuitry to not find an earth fault. So you need to use a socket that's near your fuse board, and one that's known good, so try in there. Next thing is try another house. This is something we did with, with ours, and we found that our, our actual egg hot tub thing worked in some houses and didn't work in others. We found that in other parts of the village I live in, where they're uh, below ground fed, it worked in people's houses straight away. But it didn't work in our house, and it didn't work in the houses on the same feed. We're overhead fed here. It didn't work on any of our houses, which is very, very strange. Next thing. Um, so you need to get an ele electrician out to check your ground loop impedance. Now, where we live is on a gravel pit, which means that if you use a ground spike here, it will never work. So when we had our new fuse board installed a number of years back, they had to remove the copper ground spike and they had to do neutral earth bonding, which is where you put your earth onto the neutral and, and you get an earth that way. And now we've got a really good earth here. We've got, we've got pretty much 0.19 ohms ground earth impedance. So we've got a really good earth on this house. So the electrician came out just to check there was no faults because we had some recent building work done. Good chap, came out, found no faults. He put his testers on it and everything was okay. So you need to check your ground loop impedance if you're at this stage. If you can do that easy enough. So the next thing to look at, and some of these are more intrusive. They may invalidate your warranty, but they could get you out of a, out of a fix. So we spoke earlier about the good old lead. So this is obviously not the one on the RCD, but let's pretend this is the one on the RCD. This pin is the earth pin. This needs to have a really good earth into the socket. So what someone recommended to me, this didn't work for me, but apparently it works for some people, is you lightly sand this to get any corrosion or factory coating off this. So this is quite an old one, so it's quite scraped up. But on the new, when you get your new hot tub, you'll have a bonded, give it a gentle sand with a bit of 600 or 800 sandpaper, just to make sure you've got a good connection on that earth. Remember, this is potentially 240 volts at some point. Don't do it if you don't feel comfortable with it. This may invalidate your warranty, but they're things that may get you out of the, the fix. The other thing you can do is on the plug, so this is number seven, on the other thing you can do is you get the RCD that comes with the unit and at the, each end of the RCD there's two unscrewable covers. If you unscrew, unscrewable? Unscrewable covers. And what you then do is if you unscrew them and look in there you'll see the live neutral and earth wires going into three terminals. Obviously make sure it's unplugged, clearly, 
and then get a screwdriver and just check each of those terminals is tight because I hear from internet folklore that sometimes from the factory they come with the terminals not tight and that's fixed the fault for a number of people didn't work for me unfortunately so yeah so there's six in total right you've got ground earth neutral ground earth neutral at each end just unscrew the two screws either side check those are all tight so that's that's uh, that was number six, wasn't it? Then the next thing to do is while you've got those covers off and you've tightened them up, get a multimeter, a standard multimeter, put it on resistance. Obviously, this is not plugged into the mains and just check the continuity between the earth and the earth, the main and the main and the neutral and the neutral. Just check you've got continuity properly on all those wires. I know it sounds crazy, but it's it's worth a go. It could fix it for you. The next one is very much a temporary fix and would definitely inval invalidate your warranty. Um, and this isn't this isn't how you should use it. You're just testing. So what you do is the RCD, you unscrew it and take it off and just put the plug on the three wires. I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying this is what I tested and it didn't work for me. But I was proving that the RCD was OK or was not. So putting the plug just on the bare wires, you can wire a plug and plug it in and see what it does. Remember, it's 240 volts is your own choice. So yeah, this is cutting out the RCD to prove the RCD is at fault. So that unfortunately didn't work for me. Uh, step nine, log a call with Bestway. Now this is both frustrating and time consuming. Um, when I first logged a call with them, I think they had like three week response time, it was crazy. And then when they do respond, it's like a time delay thing where they're telling you to add something you didn't add before. And then you get bumped to the back of the queue. And I think now, uh, when I'm making this video, which is later in the summer of 2020, they have about a 20 day turnaround or a 15 day turnaround. So it's very, very slow when you speak to their support. What they'll do is if you go through all the steps and it's not necessarily the same steps as mine, they will send you at some point some little plugs that you plug in to see if you're if you have any faults on your on your mains. And it also shows you your ground loop impedance. Now, for us, plug them in in all of our sockets all around the house. It came back as the best ground loop impedance you can have. Um, less than one, I think it measures. And you get green lights coming on showing it. So once we showed them that, it proved that there was nothing wrong with our mains. Um, it didn't work on any of the other houses down our road. And we said, well, there's clearly something wrong with the feed to this entire area or the unit is faulty. But remember, our unit worked in other people's houses, which was very strange if they were just in a different part of the village. So yeah, log a call with Bestway at this point. <laughs> remember, you'll have to scan in your original shop receipt and you have to take a video or numerous photos showing the GCF fault. Um, if you don't do any of those steps, you, they'll bump you to the back of the queue and you have to go round the support loop again. It's incredibly frustrating. And they have a 100 meg upload limit. So if you film it in the quality I'm filming this in, that would be well over 100 meg. So you have to put it in like 8-bit Game Boy mode or black and white just to get the video small enough to send up to them. So yeah, log a call at this point. Now, this step, number 10, this is what I did to fix it. And this is going to sound insane, um, but it definitely involves taking it to bits. So I got to the point where Bestway said, we think this is faulty. We can't find anything wrong with your feed. It must be our pump. We need you to cut the two tubes off the front. So there's like a water flow and water return. And they will send you another pump and you have to dispose of the old one because they don't want you to send it back to them because that's at their cost. And then they have to dispose of it. So you have to cut the two tubes off and get rid of it yourself. It's quite a big thing and you'd have to take it down the tip. You couldn't put it in the bin. So they asked me to destroy my pump. And I thought, well, if I'm going to destroy it, I might as well take the lid off and have a look inside just to see if there's anything wrong. So what I did was I unscrewed the top panel where the little computer is. There's what, six or eight screws on there, self-tappers, just unscrewed them lifted it out and I found the computer's on a ribbon cable. So what I did was I unclipped the computer from the ribbon cable and this is at your own risk. I then plugged it in, obviously with the RCD on the cable, turned it on, it made all kinds of clicking noises and started to make whirring noises. I then reconnected the computer and found that the GCF had cleared. So for me, turning it on without the computer connected cleared the GCF. I've, re I've rebooted it a number of times, moved its location, tested it in different sockets, and it, it hasn't come back. So, oh, apart from once, it came back once, and I just restarted it by pressing the buttons on the RCD, and it, it didn't come back. So maybe there was, you know, a, a, a passing fault on it. But my the fault with mine was that the ribbon cable from the computer to the board was somehow disconnected, even though it was connected. There was obviously a loose connection in there. So by reconnecting it, I got it working. So whether it will continue to work, I don't know. But those are the top 10 things to do if you have 
um, a best way hot tub. I'm, mine is Helsinki. Um, let me know how you get on, see if this works for you. Again, I'll stress that some of this is 240 volts and some of this may invalidate your warranty. So it's, it's, it's your own choice if you wish to follow it. Thank you very much.